to First Cumberland Presbyterian Church of Chattanooga's Virtual Stations of the Cross. We are Courtney and Lee Kruger, and we will be leading you on this pilgrimage. The Stations, or the Way of the Cross, are a traditional way of meditating on Christ's suffering and death. For centuries, pilgrims in Jerusalem have walked the streets of Jerusalem, pausing along the way to pause and reflect at places associated with the final hours of Jesus' life. The Virtual Stations of the Cross is a way for us to experience this same pilgrimage in our own holy place, the Sanctuary at First Cumberland. For our observance of this ancient ritual, we selected 12 events surrounding and including Jesus' death. These 12 come exclusively from Mark's Gospel. There are no rules for going through the Stations of the Cross. Simply be aware that you are in God's presence, and God wants you to spend this time contemplating His suffering and death. Don't worry about the proper way of, of observing the Twelve Stations. The symbols and meditations are intended to help your observance, but each scripture passage should be your focal point. You may wish to offer prayers that seem appropriate to you at each station. Station 1, The Anointing at Bethany, Mark 14, verses 3 through 9. While he was at Bethany in the house of Simon the leper, as he sat at the table, a woman came with an alabaster jar of very costly ointment of nard, and she broke open the jar and poured the ointment on his head. But some were there who said to one another in anger, Why was the ointment wasted in this way? For this ointment could have been sold for more than three hundred denarii, and the money given to the poor. And they scolded her. But Jesus said, Let her alone. Why do you trouble her? She has performed a good service for me. For you always have the poor with you, and you can show kindness to them whenever you wish. But you will not always have me. She has done what she could. She's anointed my body beforehand for its burial. Truly, I tell you, wherever the good news is proclaimed in the whole world, what she has done will be told in remembrance of her. Anointing in ancient times served many purposes. Kings were anointed with oil during their coronation. Corpses were also anointed to help keep down the stench of decomposition. The woman who anointed Jesus was, was both crowning him as her king and, perhaps unknowingly, preparing him for his burial. At this first station of the cross, spend a few moments focusing yourself on Jesus' presence in your life. Think of the love that you have for Christ and, more importantly, the love Christ has for you. Imagine the sweet smell of the nard which fill the whole room. Let your imagination lead you to experience the sweet love that Jesus has for you. Station 2, The Last Supper. Mark chapter 14, verses 17 through 25. When it was evening, he came with the twelve. While they were eating, he took a loaf of bread, and after blessing it, he broke it, gave it to them, and said, Take, this is my body. Then he took a cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to them, and all of them drank from it. He said to them, This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for many. Truly, I tell you, I will never again drink of the fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new in the kingdom of God. A Prayer Poem by Victor Hoagland Lord Jesus, once in the wilderness your people ate heavenly manna, and they were filled. And once in a desert place you fed the hungry with blessed bread. A simple thing, we say, costing our mighty God little effort. But what if bread is your body, offered for all, and a cup of wine, your own lifeblood, given to all those who hardly care? Amen. Station 3, The Garden of Gethsemane, 
Mark chapter 14, verses 32 to 42. They went to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to his disciples, Sit here while I pray. He took with him Peter and James and John and began to be distressed and agitated. And he said to them, I am deeply grieved, even to death. Remain here and awake. And going a little farther, he threw himself on the ground and prayed that if it were possible, the hour might pass from him. He said, Abba, Father, for you all things are possible. Remove this cup from me. Yet not what I want, but what you want. He came and found them sleeping, and he said to Peter, Simon, are you asleep? Could you not keep awake one hour? Keep awake and pray that you may not come into the time of trial. The spirit indeed is willing, but the flesh is weak. And again he went away and prayed, saying the same words. And once more he came and found them sleeping, for their eyes were very heavy, and they did not know what to say to him. He came a third time and said to them, Are you still sleeping and taking your rest? Enough. The hour has come. The Son of Man is betrayed into the hands of sinners. Get up, let us be going. See, my betrayer is at hand. God asks of us our very lives. Jesus himself was deeply grieved. Sometimes God's plan for our lives also causes us grief and suffering. Reflect upon God's plan for your life. Bow your head and pray as honestly as you can as Jesus did. Not what I want, but what you want. Station 4, Betrayal and Arrest, Mark chapter 14, verses 43 to 52. Immediately, while he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him there was a crowd with swords and clubs from the chief priests, the scribes, and the elders. Now the betrayer had given them a sign, saying, The one I will kiss is the man. Arrest him and lead him away under guard. So when he came, he went up to him at once and said, Rabbi, and kissed him. Then they laid hands on him and arrested him. But one of those who stood near drew his sword and struck the slave of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Then Jesus said to them, Have you come out with swords and clubs to arrest me as though I were a bandit? Day after day I was with you in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me but let the scriptures be fulfilled. All of them deserted and fled. A certain young man was following him, wearing nothing but a linen cloth. They caught hold of him, but he left the linen cloth and ran off naked. At least two forms of betrayal are obvious here. One is the overt, malicious betrayal of Judas. The other is a betrayal out of fear. Gaze upon the spilled coins, representing Judas's overt betrayal, and the orphaned linen cloth, representing the betrayal of Jesus out of fear. Confess your sins, sins of overt betrayal, and sins of fearful betrayal. Station 5, Jesus Before the Council, Mark chapter 14, verses 53 to 65. They took Jesus to the high priest, and all the chief priests, the elders and the scribes, were assembled. Now the chief priests and the whole council were looking for testimony against Jesus to put him to death, but they found none. For many gave false testimony against him, and their testimony did not agree. Some stood up and gave false testimony against him, saying, we heard him say, I will destroy this temple that is made with hands, and in three days I will build another not made with hands. But even on this point their testimony did not agree. Then the high priest stood up before them and asked, and asked Jesus, Have you no answer? What is it that they testify against you? But he was silent and did not answer. 
Again, the high priest asked him, Are you the Messiah, the Son of the Blessed One? And Jesus said, I am. And you will see the Son of Man seated at the right hand of the power and coming with the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, Why do we still need witnesses? You have heard this blasphemy. What is your decision? All of them condemned him as deserving death. Some began to spit on him, to blindfold him, and to strike him, saying to him, Prophesy! The guards also took him over and beat him. Note that although contradictory evidence was given against Jesus, he was still convicted. We are more like those convictors than we would care to admit. We choose to believe what we want to believe, contradictory evidence notwithstanding. Likewise, we tend to do what we want to do. These beliefs and actions are often contrary to God's truth and will for our lives, and we know it. How are you being called or directed by God, and yet are choosing to hear and act upon false testimony? Station 6, Jesus Before Pilate, Mark chapter 15, verses 1 through 15. As soon as it was morning, the chief priest held a consultation with the elders and scribes and the whole council. They bound Jesus, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate. Pilate asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? And he answered him, You say so. Then the chief priests accused him of many things. Pilate asked him again, have you no answer? See how many charges they bring against you. But Jesus made no further reply, so Pilate was amazed. Now at the festival he used to release a prisoner for them, anyone for whom they asked. Now a man called Barabbas was in prison with the rebels who had committed murder during the insurrection. So the crowd came and began to ask Pilate to do for them according to his custom. And he answered them, do you want me to release for you the king of the Jews? For he realized that it was out of jealousy that the chief priests had handed him over. But the chief priests stirred up the crowd to have him release Barabbas for them instead. Pilate spoke to them again, well, Then what do you wish me to do with the man that you call the king of the Jews? They shouted back, Crucify him! And Pilate asked them, Why? What evil has he done? But they shouted all the more, Crucify him! So Pilate, wishing to satisfy the crowd, released Barabbas for them. And after flogging Jesus, he handed him over to be crucified. Matthew tells us in his gospel that, that at this point Pilate washed his hands, thereby trying to exonerate himself of Jesus' murder. Baptismal waters represent God washing away our sin. Yet neither Pilate nor we are forgiven simply through washing in water. Forgiveness must come from God and is purchased with the death of Jesus. Station 7. The soldiers mock Jesus. Mark chapter 15, verses 16 through 20. Then the soldiers led him into the courtyard of the palace, that is, the governor's headquarters. And they called together the whole co cohort, and they clothed him in a purple cloak, and after twisting together some thorns into a crown, they put it on him, and they began saluting him, Hail, King of the Jews! And they struck his head with a reed, and spat upon him, and knelt down in homage to him. After mocking him thus, they stripped him of the purple cloak, and put his own clothes on him. Then they led him out to crucify him. A Prayer Poem by Victor Hoagland Lord, have mercy. Jesus, eternal Son of God. Jesus, born into the human family. Jesus, rejected by the world you came to save. Jesus, bargained for and sold for money. Jesus, foreseeing your torments and sweating blood. Jesus, betrayed by a false friend. Jesus, 
deserted by those you loved. Jesus, slapped in the face and spit upon in a court of justice. Jesus, accused by liars. Jesus, disowned by Peter. Jesus, insulted by Herod. Jesus, condemned to death by Pilate. Jesus, beaten with whips. Jesus, crowned with thorns. Jesus, rejected for the murderer Barabbas. Jesus, burdened with a cross. Jesus, stripped of your clothing. Jesus, nailed to a cross. Jesus, taunted in your pain. Jesus, abandoned. Jesus, shedding the last drop of your blood. Jesus, dying for us. Jesus, our ransom. Jesus, our brother. Jesus, our God. Have mercy on us. Amen. Station 8. Simon carries the cross. Mark chapter 15 verse 21. They compelled a passerby who was coming in from the country to carry his cross. It was Simon of Cyrene, the father of Alexander and Rufus. Crosses come in many styles, sizes, and colors. Some wear them as a symbol of their commitment, others merely as fashion. Christianity is the only world religion that has, as its symbol, an instrument of torture and death. Other religions have brighter symbols, such as a crescent moon or a lotus flower. As you contemplate these various crosses, consider anew Jesus' words to us. If any want to become my followers, let them deny themselves and take up their cross and follow me. For those who want to save their life will lose it, and those who lose their life for my sake and for the sake of the gospel will save it. For what will it profit them to gain the whole world and forfeit their life? Indeed, what can they give in return for their life? Station 9, The Crucifixion, Mark chapter 15, verses 22 to 32. Then they brought Jesus to the place called Golgotha, which means the place of a skull. And they offered him wine mixed with myrrh, but he did not take it. And they crucified him, and divided his clothes among them, casting lots to decide what each should take. It was nine o'clock in the morning when they crucified him. The inscription of the charge against him read, King of the Jews. When it was noon, Darkness came over the whole land until three in the afternoon. What would we see if we were there when Jesus was crucified? In the somber half gloom, the darkness the Gospels describe, Jesus Christ would hang from a rough cross. Not a shining cross of silver or gold, but a stark cross of rugged wood. Our eyes would see a man dying slowly without relief, a crucified man, his body wrenched with pain, a sight not easy to look at. What would we hear if we were there when Jesus was crucified? The harsh thud of nails driven with a stone through flesh and wood, the moaning of the dying, the periodic insults shouted to the cross, the mockery of his enemies to his claim of divine sonship, the few gasping words of Jesus himself, sounds not pleasant to the human ear. Only faith tells us there's something more about the crucifixion of Jesus. In that unlikely place, in pain and sorrow, God showed love for a sinful world. May our vision of faith grow until we value life in the light of our faith in the Son of God, who loved us and gave himself up for us. Station 10, The Last Words of Christ, Mark chapter 15, 
verses 34 to 36. At three o'clock, Jesus cried out with a loud voice, Eloi, Eloi, lama sabachthani, which means, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? When some of the bystanders heard it, they said, Listen, he's calling for Elijah. And someone ran, filled a sponge with sour wine, put it on a stick and gave it to him to drink, saying, Wait, let's see whether Elijah will come to take him down. A Prayer Poem by Victor Hoagland O Jesus, Son of God, you were born in a stable and died on the cross for our salvation. Say to your heavenly Father at the hour of my death, Father, forgive them. Say to your loving mother, Behold your daughter, behold your son. Say to my soul, This day you shall be with me in paradise. My God, my God, do not forsake me in that hour. I thirst, my God. Yes, my soul thirsts for you, the fountain of living waters. My life passes like a shadow, yet a little while, and it is finished. So, my Savior, from this moment and for all eternity, into your hands I commend my spirit. Lord Jesus, receive my soul. Amen. Station 11, Death. Mark chapter 15, verses 37 through 41. Then Jesus gave a loud cry and breathed his last, and the curtain of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. Now when the centurion who stood facing him saw that in this way he breathed his last, he said, Truly, this man was God's son. There were also women looking on from a distance. Among them were Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James the younger and Joseph and Siloam. These used to follow him and provided for him when he was in Galilee. And there were many other women who had come up with him to Jerusalem. We deny our own death. We are unable to prepare for the death of the death of loved ones. Even when we know for weeks that death is near, the moment of death is a surprise. Death is almost incomprehensible to us. Death is nothingness, absolute darkness, endless abyss, the end. Consider this empty cross. Jesus was dead and gone. Nothing on earth could bring him back. His dreams, his fears, and his sufferings were over. Jesus was dead. Twelve, the burial of Jesus. Mark chapter 15, verses 42 through 47. When evening had come, and since it was the day of preparation, that is, the day before Sabbath, Joseph of Arimathea, a respected member of the council, who was also himself waiting expectantly for the kingdom of God, went boldly to Pilate and asked for the body of Jesus. Then Pilate wondered if he were already dead, and summoning the centurion, he asked him whether he had been dead for some time. When he learned from the centurion that he was dead, he granted the body to Joseph, then Joseph brought a linen cloth, and taking down the body, wrapped it in the cloth, and laid it in a tomb that had been hewn out of the rock. Then he rolled a stone against the door of the tomb. Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of Jesus saw where the body was laid. Dead bodies are as seed in the soil. Every grain must die, be buried, so that new life emerges from its membranes. Dying in order to live, we begin to revolt against the agonies of Christ's suffering and death. We say, no, I don't want this darkness anymore. I want to live. I want Easter to dawn right now. How do we get the necessary hope to lighten up the heaviness of our spirit? I will start something new. The new has already begun. I will go before you 
says Christ. It seems like an answer, but perhaps the thought needs to germinate for a while in our hearts. The prophet Isaiah reminds us, Morning comes, says the sentinel, but still it is night. Let us pray. Jesus, we stand at your grave and we mourn. We shout our questions and beg for answers. We want to remain filled with hope and we want to discover the way that you have shown us, the way of love stronger than death. We anxiously wait for Easter as the shadow of the valley of death casts its pall upon us. Amen. The Stations of the Cross ends with the burial of Jesus. Just as the disciples had to wait until Sunday to experience Jesus' resurrection, so too we must exit the stations waiting for what God will do. There are all sorts of images for resurrection, flowers, butterflies, sunrises, and pomegranate fruit. But all of these are natural phenomena. There's nothing natural about the resurrection. We can do nothing to bring it about. We cannot offer God anything to pay for it. We must trust God and wait for God to give us that great gift. We pray that the Stations of the Cross have brought you a new or enhanced experience of the love of Jesus. Go now in peace. Amen.